I was 15 years old um, and I was a victim of a violent sexual crime. Um, was at a friend's house. Um, it was just her and I there. She had an older brother um, and it was a friend of her brother's and her brother that showed up at the house. I was there with her and um, had gone into the bathroom and at that point um, I was uh, then taken from the bathroom. Um, the, the door was kicked in and um, my head was hit up against the mirror and the mirror, mirror actually shattered and um, left some cuts on my face at that point. Um, but it was a big enough blow that I wasn't um, cognizant of, you know, being actually taken. I remember bits and pieces of that, um, but then I was thrown, put, put in the back of a truck, in the bed of a truck, um, and um, was driven. Um, I could tell the first few turns, but then I really lost my way. It got darker and darker. There were no more street lights. There were no more identifiers. And so um, I had no idea where he was taking me. And honestly, at that point, I didn't know why. Then we got to uh, the location, which I now um, am very familiar with. Um, it was something there in our, our hometown where um, younger people used to just go and hang out. He um, utilized a baseball bat, rocks to um, hit me. Um, and most of the blows were to my skull. Um, I, and the more I fought back, the more ang he became angrier and was um, just hitting me harder. So at that point, I was approximately um, 95 pounds. So I was pretty small. I would say um, he was uh, probably around 200 pounds. Um, and so I, it was, wasn't was a fair fight, but I, I definitely tried um, once I realized what he was trying to do. Um, and he um, very much told me that he was going to kill me. And um, then he also, um, during our um, court proceedings, which took place in juvenile um, court because we were both underage. Um, he said that there was the intent to actually kill me um, because I had angered him. Um, that was part of his defense was that I was actually um, violent towards him. And um, although I had been taken from the location that I was at and, and taken out into the middle of the woods, but um, I, he utilized weapons um, in the assault, not just bats and rocks, but he actually had a knife. Um, I had a scar underneath um, my chin, and um, then I had cuts on my face from the actual hit in the mirror. Um, and then he utilized the knife um, in a method that um, uh, that left quite a bit, left a, left a lot of scarring on my body. I realized that I was not going to make it out alive if I didn't stop fighting. Um, and so um, that was one of the hardest decisions to, to make. After the assault, he continued to hit me and beat me. And um, I started to try to have my breaths go with the blows so that um, he wouldn't see me breathing anymore. So he would stop, so he would stop hitting me in the head. And um, I was face down. Um, and I remember breathing in, you know, because we were in the woods, I remember breathing in like leaves or stuff from, from the ground. And, um, but I, I would definitely held my breath um, when there was no movement on his part and he was checking me and um, just tried to still, still myself and steady myself um, so that I could make it out of there. Well, he drove off and then uh, a few hours later, I remember um, based on a, a timeline that we've pieced together, um, I remember feeling it starting to rain and um, felt the rain coming down and uh, came to, woke up. Turns out um, he uh, assaulted his um, wife and then actually assaulted a responding police officer. And because of the assault on the police officer, he's in prison for the rest of his life. It could have been prevented. We've got to do better. We've got to do more. Um, we've got to do more to help people in these situations. So.